Well, welcome back to the shop, guys. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. So normally I have my tractor, that little Oliver 550, right in this area. I've moved it over, um, and the reason I've moved it to this location, and I've got a drop cloth under it, is I'm, I'm gonna. It's it's December right now, mid December, almost late December, even. Uh, I don't know, the 20th right now. So if you look straight up, you're gonna see that in a long vent going out. That is my forge hood. So normally I have my coal forge right here and it's exhausted up to that. That thing sucks it up pretty good. So I'm gonna end up making a makeshift paint booth out of this so that I can paint this thing over the winter months, uh, January and February here in uh, Southwest Indiana. And um, my hope is that I can get this painted. I mean, this is the best way I know how to do it. Get this body painted so that I can then move it back over to where it was um, at previously. And then I can start taking things like the hood and the grill and the wheels. I still have to paint the wheels. Um, so I can start putting those things on the tractor. Right now I'm kind of in limbo because I can't put anything on the tractor. So I went ahead and bought new rims for the front. Um, I think in a previous episode I'd showed you the tires already. So I got new rims. I got them from yesterday's tractor. Really, really pleased with um, the quality of those rims for the 550. And then, um, so what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to set you up in the tripod and I'm going to take off all these wheels and I'm going to put this thing up on stands, jack stands, screw jacks in the back and jack stands in the front. And, um, and what I'll eventually do is I'll put plastic, I'll just drape plastic walls all around this from my rafters. So that way, if I put plastic in there and I weight the base of them a little bit, and the reason I got to weight the base of them because when I flip on that fan, that fan, that exhaust fan up above will suck the bottom part of those, that plastic kind of toward the, the fan. That exhaust fan is pretty powerful. So I'll weight the base of those um, pieces of plastic. But the, the advantage to using plastic over just hanging drop cloths is I get a lot more light in there. And I'll still probably put some lights in there so that I can see when I do prime and paint, but this way I'll still have better lighting, less, less shadow. So let's get cracking. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to talk over the rain. It's pretty loud here right now. Tin barn and all, even though it's insulated, it's still pretty loud. So you saw me in um, time lapse there pull these wheels and tires off. And uh, I've just got it on the back. I've got these screw jacks. These things are beast. The beauty of these is I can, I can screw them up just tight enough to just pull the wheels off the ground. Um, just a hair and that makes it much easier when I go to put those wheels back on because I will have to put it back on Once I, I power wash this again That's why you're seeing a little bit more rust maybe than last time you saw it because I tried to get as much of this flaking paint off as I possibly can I'm going to wire wheel it every place that I can wire wheel it and then the places I can't get to with a wire wheel, I'll just have to use a good stiff wire brush and um, get some of them. You, you can see out here on the valve cover, I've used a wire brush just to get some of that rust off that I put on there. And um, I'll paint the exhaust manifold silver with, it's a high temp silver. And then I'll pull things like my um, distributor cap and oil filter. Those things will come off the tractor. There'll be several things that, you know, are, are fairly easy to unbolt that'll come off the tractor. And uh, 
other things will get taped up. You know, I'll probably tape that up, or I may, eh, I'll probably tape it up. I don't know, when I see. I may take that little screw there and, and undo the couple bolts. This right here, I think I can unscrew this so that I won't have to tape that up. And uh, same thing on my shifter knob. My biggest chore is going to be getting it clean enough to where I feel I can put a good prime job on it and then paint the thing. And then, you know, I've also got to get underneath it. So I've power washed all that underneath it as well to include that oil pan, which didn't have much paint on it anyways, because I took it off um, on one of the very early episodes of this rebuild. So anyways, guys, that's where we're going to leave it. And uh, again, this is where it's going to get primed and painted and it's going to get sanded right here. So uh, I use the cloth because uh, I can paint and walk around on this cloth and it's not slippery. If I put plastic on this um, to protect my floor a little bit from so much overspray, I, it would just get slick as snot when it's wet. I will put more drop cloth down um, just to cover all of my edges around. Hi, Bucky. Say hi to Bucky. What do you think about this, Bucky? You think it's going to be a neat restoration? Yeah, me too. Well, guys, I've been doing a lot of work on this Oliver 550 kind of off camera just because there's it's what I've been doing has been essentially wire wheeling and sanding and um, lots of little detail type work. I've taken a lot of things off. Obviously, you can see the oil filters off, distributors off, the tachometer gear is off. Taking the tie rods um, on both sides and of course the PTO lever. I may end up pulling these off as well um, simply because I've got to um, sand those round bars. Basically most of this stuff is done except for the round bar stuff hasn't been sanded yet. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a look at the um, progress. I saw, Sorry about the washout of the lighting here. It's uh, the sun is kind of glaring into the barn. Now I'll back up here and I'm going to give you a little bit of a view of kind of what we've done here. All right, guys. Well, <clears throat> welcome back into the shop. It is a mess right now. I've made a makeshift paint boot. That's what all the plastic is all about. I even went so far as to cover the, the ceiling with plastic. And then those of you that have watched uh, a lot of my videos um, may know that I have a, a forge hood here and essentially I can turn on the fan and evacuate all the dust and smoke and debris. My, my hope and plan is, is that by putting all this plastic around, I'm making a makeshift paint I've been over this tractor many, many times. I've power washed it four or five times at least. I've gone through and, and wire brushed, wire wheeled, sanded, using a palm sander, using hand sanders, um, using a little uh, sponge sanders. I use a pick set to get into some of the tiny spots. Um, even underneath the tractor, I've done all of that. Um, went so far as to sand the entire oil pan down and um, from, from up the underside of the tractor. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And it, it's gonna have to suffice because you could take this thing to the nth degree, in which case I'd be pulling every part off of this. I've already got, you know, a hundred parts or more off of this tractor that I'm gonna have to paint separately, individually. So, um, I think I've taken it as far as I'm going to take. The next time um, I video, I think I'll have the exhaust manifold. You'll see the, me painting the exhaust manifold. Um, 
So let's do that. Get you a few close up shots here. I took, went ahead and took the battery cover off, the battery tray off here. I'm not getting overly concerned with some of this up in here because this is all covered. Um, I did hit it once, but I didn't get crazy on it. Now I'm getting washed out here. You can see some of the, some of the stuff, some of the wheels, very difficult to get that really, really well done pretty good through here some of that paint is really stuck on same with back here I've gotten this really well the places that I can get to you know it's not so bad but some of those areas that you can't get to but boy this thing is as clean as it's been since probably new now the paint may look like oh it's terrible but like I can't even feel that <laughs> so now, keeping in mind, this is cast, but uh, I can't feel any of that. So it looks worse than it is. I've taken sanders and run that across. And so those tend to be um, lower spots and things like that. So um, I think that my prime should take care of a lot of this. I've done very little right through here. I think I'm gonna pull these lines off just so I can get in there a little bit better. And ultimately, I really don't need to paint those lines. I will tape this off and I'll remove that. I've done my best to really get the engine area good in the frame as well as I can. Same with the axles. Man, I mean, I've really taken a lot of time to get this thing as clean as I can. It's not going to be a concourse restoration. You can see where I'm tipping off the manifold and essentially I'll take some paper and I'll just run some paper on the back side and then on the underside and then I'm gonna shoot that with some uh, high temp silver. So I've got a little bit of prep done. Obviously I've taped off everything, I'm trying to get you know all the way back in there pretty good. So I'll shoot that from the other side so you'll see me standing all over this thing. I'll set you guys up, I think about right here. I've got the intake side covered with some rubber, the exhaust, um, the muffler actually clips over this, so none of this rubber is going to matter for the most part. <clears throat> I'm using this VHT flame proof, very high temperature, it says 1300 to 2000 range on the temperature. more than an adult to open it apparently I've got the barn sufficiently warm I believe so I think we're ready to go here I did take off my covering for the carburetor I had a, a rubber glove with a piece of wire wrapped over this just to keep stuff debris from going up into the intake um, I've taken that off just because you will see this part All right, guys, so I've got her taped off, prepped as best as I'm going to prep it anyways. And um, we're ready to put some primer on it. This is a water-based primer. It's um, I think it's a PPG product, if I recall. It's something they use on Boeing 
airplanes. So I've got some cloth in the spark plug holes. So tried to cover up threads and different things that, you know, I thought should be a good idea to cover up. So I'm gonna drop these, all this plastic around me and I'm gonna start spraying. I've got the shop, I think, warm enough now that we shouldn't have an issue. And I'm gonna put you guys on time-lapse. Well, here's the post primer phase of the tractor. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I think it turned out really well. Uh, I was fairly meticulous in cleaning, so that made a, uh, that helped quite a bit. I used dental picks in some areas to try to get some areas clean. Although I still could find some dirt, I mean, it, there's places underneath it that were pretty bad. I got them pretty good, but <clears throat> probably not perfect. So, looks pretty good. And this paint, let me see. I'll, I'll show you what paint it was or what primer it was here in a minute. Let me get you some close-up shots here of it. It's kind of funky looking. It's a water base. This is the first time I've ever shot water based. Probably on the wrong side. On the side catching light. So I think it turned out really nice. If I can get the paint to go on just as well, I'll be happy. This stuff is real thin. You, of course, you can get it thin as you want it, but um, you just put more water in it. But anyway, it's pretty thin, and so it did want to run on me a bit. Fortunately, a run with this stuff isn't too detrimental. I've got some runs in, around in here and other areas I'm sure I don't even know about. I really, really, really wanted to get that oil pan clean. So, I really focused on getting a primer job on the oil pan and protecting it. So, I did manage to do that. So, you can see there, right underneath the engine bolt, there's some dirt. Most of it, I was able to get. So there it is, guys. I know the lighting's a little funky. It's kind of a yellow-green primer. So speaking of that, this is the primer, PPG Aerospace Def 44Y022 base component. So that's it right there. And uh, I got this for a good deal on eBay. There's the catalyst.
finished product. I'm gonna do my best to not let the light wash too much of this out. You can see right there, the light is pretty bad. Let's see if I can't block some of that as we move across the tractor. I put drop cloth and paper on the floor just to keep the dust down. So that when I was painting, if I'd have put plastic on the ground, it'd been real slick. So turned out real nice. Really pleased. This enamel goes on nice and clean. Gets a real nice shine. It's shinier than even the, the video which shows on the screen, which yeah, I don't want it too smooth. I want it still looking like cast iron. So that's one thing about the enamel is it can, it can kind of build up and almost smooth out that cast a little bit, which I don't want. So I took off the uh, saran wrap that I had over the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold. That's that high temperature heat or high temperature paint. And um, you can see there, I got a little bit of the green paint on some of that. That'll burn off, I'm sure, and won't be a big deal. Let's see if we can squat down here. So, real pleased with everything. And um, so, the next get step, guys, is going to be putting the tires and rims back onto the tractor. I've got them sitting over there. And uh, and then what we'll do is we'll move the tractor somewhere over here. I don't know, maybe right next to Compressor Row, Compressor Alley. <laughs> um, and that way then as we work on parts and I'll be able to set up some tables in here. And again, um, there's my exhaust hood. I'll, you know, it allows me to drop this plastic and kind of have a bit of a paint booth in here. And so I'll be able to set up some tables in here and be able to sand and prime and paint. And then, um, you know, once they're dried up, I'll be able to put them on over there on that side of the shop. That side of the shop, you're only getting a partial view because of the plastic. So anyways, guys, I think we'll end this video there. Um, hope it's something that's, uh, that you can enjoy a little bit and maybe um, give you some ideas for your own tractor. So thanks again for watching. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. God bless and until the next video.